Hello and welcome to Art You Can See in a Day. I'm Veronica Thompson and we are at the Crystal Bridges Museum in Bentonville, Arkansas. The piece we will be looking at today is a bust of Proserpine sculpted by Hiram Powers. Powers designed the sculpture in 1848 within the neoclassical and romantic movements. Many will know the figure by her Greek name Persephone. She is the goddess known for being forced into marriage by her uncle and made to spend half the year in hell. Powers creates in Proserpine a remarkable blend of texture and balance. The texture of the work is naturalistic in some aspects, such as the slanted elegance of the goddess's form and the manner in which she looks off to the side. Other elements are idealized, such as the even balance of her hair and the distinctive way that it weaves around the top of her head like an actual type of wrap. The texture resumes a naturalistic style in the back, where the hair is less detailed and pinned up in a wilted and very maiden-like fashion. At the base of the sculpture, we see leaves spilling out on top of each other in a blossoming and abundant manner. The piling of leaves, along with the idealization of the hair, produce a unique and balanced frame for the statue. The intricacy of these details gives us a more comprehensive look into the goddess's story. This carving serves as an exceptional depiction of iconography and biography. It is said that Proserpine was picking flowers when she was spotted and taken by her father's brother. Powers makes a reference to this in the creation of the statue's floral base. The verse goes on to tell us that just before her abduction, she was playful and happy. The leaves are therefore said to allude to Proserpine's identity. While Powers takes care to surround his subject with the symbol, he does not turn a blind eye to the goddess's plight. Instead, he exposes her breasts as an allegory of what was taken from her. The artist also makes her face expressionless but cutting in order to symbolize the anguish of her voice being essentially snuffed out. His work, however, is sentient not only of her burdens but also of her individuality and dignity. In addition to identity, the floral base also alludes to a larger portion of Proserpine's story. When she was taken, her mother, Ceres, the goddess of agriculture, neglected the earth and allowed nature to freeze and die out for several months. When Ceres finally found her daughter, Proserpine had eaten six pomegranate seeds from hell, rendering the goddess unable to leave. Ceres, in turn, refused to restore nature on earth until her daughter was free of the underworld. Because Hades and Ceres both had something to bargain with, it was resolved that Proserpine would spend only half the year in hell and the other half on earth. Upon her return to the world, she would bring with her the restoration of nature. The legend asserts that this is why we have the winter and spring months. The floral base tells us this story, and her wounding, if invisible, eyes give us a romanticized depiction of mystery and emotion. I personally have been a fan of Greek and Roman mythology for years. I thoroughly enjoyed Ovid's Metamorphosis and found the tale of Proserpine to be a very interesting one. Researching this piece has helped me to discover the art of the era and view the tale of the goddess with fresher eyes. Hiram Powers' Proserpine is a truly lovely carving that has allowed me to further explore the character of the young goddess. His naturalistic style reminds us of the humanism that exists in the tale despite Proserpine's status as an immortal. His idealization of the goddess references not only the more grim elements of her story, but also the beauty and character of who she was. It is a fantastic tribute to a great epic tale. I am Veronica Thompson and you are watching Art You Can See in a Day. Thanks.